Well, we knew they couldn't keep Bosco out of it for long. <laughs> what a right. massive How many amount episodes? <laughs> yes, what a massive amount of stuff they've given him to do. <laughs> First episode. Hey, We're you okay. want to totally start a war? Yeah. yeah! I'm totally down for that. Hey, don't do that. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but I might do a voice again if I'm Zuko may or may not be alive Fire Lord guy. I did like that they dropped the hint about that. It's like, but, but hey, my grandfather's been friends with the Avatar, and he sounds exactly like me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be curious to see if it still has the same voice. That would be fascinating. But anyway, uh, this, this is Peacekeepers. Uh, this is... Wait, I thought we were watching Adventure Time. What were you watching? <laughs> you know, I've seen so many episodes. Maybe there's, you know, it's having such a weird effect on me. Maybe it's starting to look like Korra. I don't know. Um, Perhaps. But, uh, yeah, so uh, this is Peacekeepers. It's sort of like a... The only way I can describe it is kind of like an in-between episode, just kind of getting stuff set up for probably the next episode, or maybe the episode after that. And nothing nothing major happens until the end, and even the major stuff is kind of stuff we know is not going to last. Oh no, a spirit ate Korra. <laughs> you know, oh no, they're really broken up, you know. Uh, I believed it. <laughs> Even though, seeing how everyone's been acting, it's probably the best thing, honestly. It's obviously a dysfunctional relationship. Mako does something that makes sense. She hurls his desk across his office. <laughs> well, and the interesting thing about this episode is all the stuff being suggested is cool, but clearly insane. And everyone seems to be along for it, and... Again, sort of an interesting cross. No, except for Mako, the only voice of reason in the entire show. Yeah, now. no, it's one of those things where it's like, well, okay, it's you have everyone wants to do this really batshit crazy idea, like everyone's fucking on board with it, just like, hey, you know if the president don't, doesn't want to support us, then fine, we'll take the Fuck him. and do it ourselves. It's like how many like <laughs> Who moral, needs constitutional ethical, authority? Yeah, we have a fucking how avatar. many codes is that against? But at the same time, like when Iroh started talking about you know the plan that they're gonna do it's like this sounds pretty cool like i'm ready and it's like oh yeah, yeah responsible admit, adult stuff I, yeah i have to admit though there was a part of me that was just like well for god's sakes a general in the army would be yeah that sounds like a great idea cora I was like, oh, what <laughs> the only thing i can figure is like, because this, he's like did you and he says it out loud so if my uh fleet was to accidentally bump into the northern water tribes blockade then, in theory, we would only be defending ourselves. So, basically, I'm gonna go start a war because a 16-year-old teenage girl told me to. But it's the Avatar who's <sighs> clearly shown she's quite crazy in many scenes. So, yeah, it's what. But everyone seems to be on board with it. Ex yeah, like you said, except for Mako. Except for Ma I, like Mako had the exact same reaction I had when they came up with it. He's just like when Bolin's telling him it. He's like, and then we're gonna go to General Iroh, who's then gonna bump into him and start a war. <laughs> Mako's is like, that seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, but it's an awesome idea. So it's like, okay, you have logical common sense, but then you have awesome ass-kicking possibilities. So as it's a viewer, an, it's, okay, I want to see yeah. the ass-kicking possibilities. As but somebody as who a likes writer, it, yeah, as a writer, I'm like, that's the stupidest that's thing horrendous. I've ever heard. <laughs> as a viewer, I'm just like, yes, start a war. <laughs> so I'm really very torn on that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, so it's, I, it makes Cora look... I'll give credit that at least everyone is in on the stupid crazy plan and not just Chorus. It makes her look a little better, but at the same time, it's like everybody's in on this stupid crazy it's plan. Not, okay, I'll tell you what bothered me. Cora's plan is dumb, but you're right, everybody was in on it. I think the part where I started to lose is where Mako is legitimately figuring out that there's a conspiracy, and she's just always biting his head off. Like, seriously, and then, like, when he, she finally, like, kicked his desk, I just, uh, watching it for the first time, I'm just like, she's just, like, one step removed from a thug now. Mm. He's like, I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and that, that, that gets I don't know. It, 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 yeah. I mean, it, I, well, it is old. It's not even getting old. It's pretty I old. mean, she gets swallowed by the spirit at the end, so I'm hoping maybe going into the spirit's belly or whatever is going to knock some sense into her. She'll have some spiritual journey where yeah. she'll realize something, which I like, thought... <laughs> We kind of did already at the end of season one when she hit her lowest low. Yeah. 
apparently it wasn't her lowest low because now she's like running around trying to start. I'll see if I can hit a new desk. lowest low. <laughs> so. I don't know, yeah, I've been trying to defend this show as best I can, but I'm finally hitting a point now where I'm just like, I I'm having issues and I'm like, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm getting like to a certain it, point. It does like, get tiring. It, it, it gets really I can't, tiring. yeah, I don't know how to defend it really except to say like, well, maybe she's going to learn from this, but at the same time, like I just said, I thought that's what season one was about. Yeah, I, and it seems to be like... I don't know. It's one of those things. If we already know what she's supposed to learn, and we do, we know she's supposed to learn patience and being smart and not rushing into things. And again, we had sort of the first season for that, and that I sort of had issue with, but you give it a pass. The fact that just doing it again is just so tiring and not furthering anything. Well, and I guess my thing is after five, six, however many episodes we're in, I'm not seeing any learning, actually. That's my yeah. one thing. I'm like, maybe if she came to some sort of conclusion somewhere, but it's just like, be subtle. What does she do? She threatens a judge with her man bear pig. Um, you know, we can't afford to start a war. Well, I'm going to ride with this protest. Even Lin Bei Fong's like, yeah, that's really going to keep him calm. <laughs> you know, Mako's like, you know, hey, maybe it's in the world. Fuck you, Mako. Like, it, it, and yeah, like no, at we'll the end of this, it's like, I'm going to break his desk. And I'm going to charge off on a motorboat. And I'm like, I'm not seeing any growth yet. Maybe I'm getting yeah. to that point where I'm just like, okay, you've done what you can with she's an angsty teenager. Now we need to start. Yeah, I mean, and like on. you said, they did, in, they did in the first season already. Why are they just, but uh, I, I will say this again, all the other side character stuff was great. Whenever it comes <laughs> to Tenson with the lemurs, like I was like, I'm actually a little bit more interested in this, honestly. Oh, okay, <laughs> the, yeah, this is my biggest issue is how how tired is the main story getting when I'm like, the coolest things in this episode was Mako and Tenzin and his boy training flying lemurs. I'm like, by all accounts, this would be the dull side story of the, you know, show. And I'm like, oh, let's see what's going on with the lemurs. Uh, yeah, no, it's like, it's like, it's, I mean, it's like, it, that's the only legitimate emotional moment in this one is that, and I, let me make it clear, I don't like really hate this episode, honestly. You know, I'm not like that angry at it, but this episode, it is but something, this is the it's first like, one that was the only real really emotional, and, and this was the, only, that was the only emotional moment in this was when the boy says, it's tough being the alpha lemur and Tenson says, I know. It's like, you get it and you feel it and that there is a problem when you realize that you felt real emotion there and yet the scene where the main love interest break up it's like eh that, that, that kind of felt right whatever and and when it, she gets swallowed by a giant spirit it's like eh we know she'll get out of it fine so I whatever know, i don't know if i hate this episode but this was the first episode i've seen all season where i'm like I feel kind of taxed now, like my patience is starting to wear thin. Like I'm like, is, you know, I was saying in the last one, I'm like, oh, I'm psyched, let's see where they go with this. And then I'm just like, I came out of this, like that whole scene with General Ira. I'm like, sweet, General Ira's in there, what's gonna happen? Nothing. I was like, okay, there were four lines and, okay, well, what's gonna happen with this plot? Nothing, well, they're not gonna get the president. Well, they're not gonna start the war. Well, they break up, which you said was like, yeah, that felt like just what it needed to be. I mean, on Tenzin's side, we got this promise of, oh, uh, Tenzin's kid sees the statue glowing and all of this, and I'm still kind of sitting here like... Yeah, what was that? What was that? Like, we still haven't gone back to that, and while the, the training of the uh, lemur scene I thought was actually pretty cool, I'm still kind of like, you know, when it's all said and done, he's just training some lemurs. There's nothing really earth-shattering there. Well, no, and what, I, um, what I'm realizing watching this is that... As cute as the scene was, and the best line in there was when he says... Being the alpha lemur is lonely, and he's like, I know. So. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like a really I like, emotional I was scene. Like, I was like, where are they going with this? And when it got to that, I'm like, I get it. Okay, well played. That was awesome. Um, and what I'm realizing, actually, sort of a difference between this one and the next one, and again, maybe it's building up to something, but with the first season, I did realize that for all the faults I did sort of have with it, I did want to know what was going to happen with the name, main story. I wanted to know what's going to happen with this uh, man guy and who he was well, and what's going to happen. I just, I'm, I'm trying to remember what actually like is the main concern. Some sort of civil war was it again about getting spirits sort of put away? They're coming through. Yeah, what was sort of the 
thing. Well, no, now coming this. Through. We've got the civil war brewing. Yeah, got... but it, it, it's kind of like, what's the main urgent? Oh no, let's there's, get back to this. Bolin's thing. not marriage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like that, and, and that's. Kind of, I, I love that they're a movie star, and I like all the little yeah, side stories. Yeah, all the little side right. stories it's like are great. It's but like what's the, the main focus? Right now. Yeah, well, what's the main focus that really has our concern? Maybe that's why the Tenson stories are so much better and have us because you immediately get the concern. You immediately know there's, where he's coming they're from. They're short. They're sweet. They're intimate. They're like really small stories, and as good as I thought, because I actually liked the first season. Um, and we're not done with this, so I mean, they may be pulling something really cool up ahead. Um, I'm really hoping I go into the spirits in the next yeah, one. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, we were promised the spirit world, and I feel like we're like, okay, well, there's five episodes in, we're still a political thriller. But mm. the, the first season, I thought it was a really, really good political thriller, and I thought it was really tightly written. Uh, some of the... I still think the bending ball or whatever that's called. Right, <laughs> was fine. If you don't like bending ball, that's fine. But, I mean, you're 100% wrong, but that's completely fine. But, but at the very least, least still, you want to see what's going to happen you, okay, in that thing. So I don't like, I don't like, you know. I kept wanting to go back to the political thriller, though. That was the thing yeah, I wanted but, to go okay, back fine, to. Okay, fine. like, I don't like bending ball. Fine. But whatever. But it still was all tied together. And in that 13 episodes, I'm like, okay, you crammed one really good story in that involved two mm. villains. You know, their backstory, all of this, you had... And I wanted to know what was going to happen, and it kept the focus. We still don't have a villain villain. I don't know what Unlock's deal is, do you? Yeah, he's just sort of, eh, I kind of sort of want power, my brother, Dur. Yeah, we knew, Z <laughs> we knew Zuko, we knew the, the Fire Lord. The Fire Lord was like Sauron, you just mm -hmm. never saw him, but he was like this presence. Mm -hmm. Um... I think that was one thing, like, and I, I will totally admit, because, like, we sound like a couple of douchebags here, just like, wine, 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 wine. <laughs> I will say, okay, straight up, we are armchair quarterbacking, because we're <laughs> only six, five, you know, we're, yeah, we're only, like, you know, a handful of episodes in, so, I mean, this is totally armchair quarterbacking, and, like, the show could totally pick up and be, like, way better than season one ever was, and this was just, like, you know, the... Just getting there, so... No, I, I, I think there is a problem, like I said. I mean, because I think both of us had the same reaction, that we cared more about the Tencent story about train, train the lemur and had yeah. an actual, legitimate, emotional moment, even if it well, was Tencent a small moment. Tencent seems to be as absorbing to everything else. things. Like, he's yeah. absorbing these lessons and from I'm his not kids getting and, it, and, yeah, yeah, e e Even though I like, I like this other story, fine, I love these side characters. Yeah, uh, I, love I like the, the side characters much more here than I did in the last one, I but love the, the main thriller focus. aspect. Mako's investigation was the most interesting yeah. thing in this episode to me. I'm like, ooh, who is this guy? Yeah, why is the Fire Nation perhaps in on this? Ooh, who hired? You know, I'm like, I'm like, that's kind of interesting. Like, and then, but even that, um, I had an issue with that because the two very obvious corrupt cops, it's like the Springfield Police Department going yeah. on. It's like, all right, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. We'll yeah, do that, yeah, that phone it in, Lou. Like, okay, chief, <laughs> yeah. And they throw the picture in the... But here's my thing, though. It's like, things are not adding up for me. It's like, Lim Bei Fong was such a badass. You know, the cops seem to have everything under control. And now Mako's here, and I'm just like, so you got these two corrupt cops that don't do jack shit, and Lim Bei Fong, the first thing she says is, well, give it to those two. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, no, I... Like, I thought Lynn was, like, a little more savvy than that. I guess I don't want to see her kind of, like, running an idiot department or, like... I, so, I don't know, but I, I think overall, for all the armchair quarterbacking, and this is just an armchair quarterback observation, watching this season unfold so far, it seems to me, and this may be because of the way negotiations with Nickelodeon went down, they, they didn't know where they may have been going with this, all of that was up in the air, but it seems to me like this went backwards. I feel like Amon and that whole plot thread with the Republic unwinding and all of that and the, the battle versus the Benders and Korra finding, hitting her lowest low, should have been after all this. And well, I mean, this may completely reverse itself, and I will totally eat my words and be like, no, this worked out. But so far, just so far into this, I'm just like, that was an instantly <clears throat> connectable villain that, like, I feel like that was really upping the ante. And so far, I, I feel like we're kind of just. I think the key word along. is instant, in that if you, you could say in a sentence sort of what the plot of each season of, you know, the Avatars are like last season, you know, what was the plot? Stop a guy who wanted to take away bending from benders. It's like, you get it, and hey, yeah. that's not good. You know, it gets a little more complicated than that of, and interesting, but here it's like, yeah. what's the plot? Um, spirit world blowing up that somehow equals civil war with people. It's, 
you can't explain it in one sentence. Well, you know. And, which or, or at least not the way that would get you to care or be invested. I'm wondering, why, I'm wondering if it wouldn't have been better than to start off with that plot thread. Because season one of the original Avatar, and I love it, that tends to be the little more fillery kind of we're figuring this out uh, as we go kind of season. And maybe they would have been better served if they went with this story arc first. Yeah, even as simple and as... And then the Amon. Because Amon, that whole concept to me is always like, that's about as ultimate as it gets. To take away the bending, to have a villain... Why that with a spirit that. world, they can push it a little further. It can, I just haven't seen yeah, anything Yeah, we just haven't yet. seen anything yeah. uh, really dabble with yet. You know, yeah, even with the original Avatar, uh, as simple as it is, uh, Fire Lord wants to destroy world or take over world. It's like, you get it, and you get the investment. It's like, I'm not seeing the real investment here. It's like, a war can start oh, between these people you sort of don't know and these people you also sort of don't know. But you kind of know these, our main characters are from there, kind of. So it's okay. And, and, but, and But then the spirit world, which we don't really know that well. It's, all and that stuff is stuff we don't really know that well. We know the characters are invested, which is great, but we're not that invested. And another thing I don't get is what is the purpose of the Republic? Because I'm getting very confused, because like, well, we got to go to the president. And he's like, you know, the president, you know, they have their photo op. He's like, okay, you got to intervene. The, the, the two water tribes are just like going at it. It's like, well, it's not the Republic's place to really, uh, I'm like, what? I, you're called the United Republic. What are you fucking doing? What is their purpose? I'm like, well, I, mean, I don't get is, are the other nations still in existence and the Republic is a separate entity, like a sort of model UN or something well, that sits and maybe, there in the middle of the And that's the one of the things where, like, or, yeah, I maybe, just don't get what their point is. Maybe Cora has a point when she's saying, what's wrong with you? Get in there sort of thing. But at the, or maybe not, because it's like, hey, you kind of need to know what you're getting into as well. So, but you're, I'm kind of with you. It's like, you know, oh, we'll just look into it, whatever. And it doesn't seem like they're doing much. So. Maybe, maybe that's sort of the point of the episode, man. It makes it a little bit more like, hey, what's the right thing? Well, but I think Cora I has know. a point. I just thought her solution, which is to like, you know, hey, I got an idea. Let's wipe our ass with the Republic's constitution yeah. and totally start a war with the army. I'm like, that's a freaking coup. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's well, everyone's insur- okay with it for some reason. I'm like, that's insurrection. And General Ira was like, rock on. <laughs> so, fire tribe. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I guess bottom line, the... I guess both as a writer and a viewer, we're not totally blown away with this episode because we don't get our die hard cool feel, war man. and we don't really have much logic to support I feel like, it. I feel like happen. hook and hook. I want my war. <laughs> <laughs> or just something. But, but I mean, I, I don't think this is like the worst episode or not, anything. We haven't jumped the shark. But yeah, it's, but it's sort of like, you know. I definitely thought yeah, we were going to go places. And yeah, like, let, let's really get a focus here that we can get behind, you know, and a story that we can say very simply, this is. It, it can have complications, right? But the story, very simple, that we can say, yes, I want to get behind this. I want to see what's going to happen next week. Uh, you know, like I say, even with the first Korra season, the problems I had, I would still tune in because it's like, well, hey, well, what's going to happen? What's going to, you know, I want to know what's going to happen with this villain and everything. Here, it's like, maybe the spirit world? But even then, that's not really dealt with much. So... I, I, I don't have, I mean, I'll keep tuning in. I mean, I guess I do sort of want to see what happens because it's these people, you know, the same people that did Korra and Avatar, but it's more just, I'm tuning in for that and maybe see some of the fun side characters. All, all I know there's is... No, there's no investment of, I have yeah. to see this. And that's kind of a shame. Yeah, because I can say with the first season, I seriously was like... Every single episode, like, I just would, like, want to see the next one, like, right away. I was just, like, watch them one after another, and I was completely hooked. After this episode, and that's the thing, is so far I've been really trying to defend this show, and, like, no, no, it'll get good. It's, it's you know, we're doing pretty good. I, I like all these things. This is the first episode out of the set that I'm just kind of like, yeah, that was all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I guess. Okay, so like, we'll, I'll watch the next one, hoping it's better. Yeah, so I mean, it's... Get the spirit world, man! Come on! <laughs> I think and that's the big answer. Yeah. As as somebody going. explain to me how the Republic works, because I just, <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, they may be as inefficient as the UN, but I'm like, <laughs> I thought you all were the Republic. I thought it's the United Republic. Why does the Republic then have a military if it's not comprised of the four nations? Which means it has to be comprised so of the four nations. So people can come in and steal it under their yeah. noses. Unless, obviously. I mean, unless it's like the United Nations, but should, but in which case, can they march in and take over the water trip? It's like so many constitutional issues. Yes. <laughs> so 
regardless, still good side characters. Um, still good side stories, honestly. It's just, Comedy was still great. Yeah, let's get um. Not Tuck, by the way. <laughs> Greatest the, the whole, name ever. Yeah, the the whole Nano thing. We see the costume. It's great. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get some. Some spirit shit going on. It is called spirit, so maybe we'll finally see a few. So, until then.